Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about photorespiration. So, what is photorespiration? It is an oxygenase reaction in which O2 is taken up leading to the breakdown in CO2. It is a competing pathway with photosynthesis and it leads to a net energy loss. What leads to an increase in photorespiration? When the concentration of O2 is greater than CO2, and at higher temperatures. So what do plants do to, to decrease photorespiration? Well, plants have two adaptations, C4 photosynthesis and CAM photosynthesis that they have derived to deal with this. The first of those two we're, talk we're going to talk about is C4 photosynthesis. C4 photosynthesis is an adaptation to reduce photorespiration in hot environments. It is a spatial separation of where CO2 uptake and processing occurs. So here in my diagram, I try to explain it. O2 and CO2 come in through the stomata to the first part of the plant where PEP carboxylase is present. PEP carboxylase can only bind to CO2 and it transports it to the second part of the plant where Rubisco is present, leaving O2 in the first part of the plant. Now Rubisco is an enzyme that catalyzes photorespiration and photosynthesis. Since only CO2 is present in this part of the plant, Rubisco uh, follows photosynthesis pathway and produces sugar, which is good for the plant. All right. The last adaptation I'll be talking about today is CAM photosynthesis. It's an adaptation to reduce H2O loss in dry environments. It is a temporal separation of where CO2 uptake and processing occurs. So, during the daytime, plants close their stomata to reduce water loss in these dry environments. But since the stomata is closed, CO2 cannot come in during the day. At night, since the risk of water loss isn't as great, the stomata, uh, the stomata opens and CO2 can come in and can be saved for later use when photosynthesis will be done. And that's all for today.